Don't want any impingement if you're going up here, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So uh, if you only do one or two, then it's okay to scan from the front and side and to scan from the from behind the patient. Right, okay, so what I do is I'll look first of all on the biceps tendon to see. Bear with guys, I'm going to try and get as much probe action as possible. It's a little bit fiddly we found earlier, but give me a shout if you need me to move the camera anywhere as well. You can see me in my glasses. Uh, so here, what I'll do is I'll get, I'll optimize the image as much as I can, and then we'll, um, and then we'll get, get through. So, okay. So I've frozen on the screen here. Now let me just annotate this. So this here is the lesser tuberosity. This is the ghost tuberosity. This here is the biceps tendon. And uh, let me just pop the arrow. So, and this is your groove. So this is where it sits normally. Um, and that looks fine. And this is this is obviously muscle tissue, subcutaneous fat and the skin at the top here. Okay. Now, hopefully, if I clear all those out. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so the biceps tendon is in in the groove there nicely. Um, what what you what the trouble with the biceps tendon is you can very quickly make it look black. If I freeze that, you can see how it looks black. That would, that would be tendinosis if I hadn't optimised my, my scanning technique. So essentially, it's not tendinosis, it's just in my angle. So if I tilt down, you see how that brightens up? Okay, and I'm looking here. This is how this is bright, and now it's dark, and now it's bright again. So that's what you want to optimise it so you're looking at a bright image of that tendon all the time. Okay, so then I tend to, I tend to go down, down the arm, and you can follow it here, keeping it bright all the time. You may have to angle slightly until you come to the pet major tendon here. Okay, and that's and that's where you follow it too, and then and then back up. That's what that's what you just uh, there we go. Because I'm, I'm just trying to move the camera into moving it out off screen. See how it disappears there. And that went off screen. So we're back in there. Um, so this is good, this is good actually while we're here. So you can test the medial subluxation here. So there it is sitting in the groove, and you just rotate out, and it's, it's fine. It's not coming out, it's staying within the groove. Okay, that's sort of scapularis there, by the way. So that so that's looking for subluxation of the of the, of the biceps tendon. If it does sublux, it will tend to sublux. It will it always sublux immediately, but it'll go anterior to the uh, urine. Can I ask Adrian what what landmarks you like to use to help to guide you to the to the appropriate place when you look at this uh, biceps tendon? Well, my my first landmark would be the the groove. So just uh, just unseen the glasses again. <laughs> so I, I basically come down onto the shoulder until I see that groove, and that's my first landmark. And then I know I've got I'm on the biceps tendon. Okay, thank you. Um, so it, it can sublux measly, and if it does, you probably almost certainly disrupted your superior glenoid human ligaments um, after the after medially there. So just just um, just look. Um, to the medial aspect of that, because it, if, if it sublux, then the, it, will, it will look like this, and it looks like the, the groove is empty. Um, and it's, it's, not, it's not that it's ruptured, it's just that it's immediately sublux. So you just need to just, you just need to come really just to see if it um, has subluxed out the groove. Um, the normal thickness of this tendon, I think they say anything above 2.5 mils. Is classed as thick in terms of the pathic. So um, when you're scanning up with these, you can you should usually just eyeball it. Um, but um, I, I tend to do enough of these now to just um, 
look at it and if, if I think it's thicker, just perhaps compare it to the other side if that's asymptomatic. Um, and then that will give you a good indication that you can measure it if you want to. Um, so if there's any tina synovitis here, you tend to get a little bit of a uh, fluid or a halo around the, around the biceps tendon. I've got some images to show you of that a bit, a bit later, which we'll go through, um, but it'll be around here. You do normally have a little bit of fluid um, around that, and that's, that can be classed as normal. If it's, if it's, if it's too much of a, a big halo around here, then that's probably um, pathological. Can I just note um, Adrian's hand position right now? Can you see how he's using his um, small and uh, second finger to uh, stabilise the probe? And keep himself in place and if you're just uh, trying to grip that with a, a free hand you, you're just going to slide all over the place it's really difficult to uh, keep on their structure um, so using your hand as a guide is incredibly helpful yeah all, all these all these tips are, are very easy to to get across in the in a, in a face to face practical session a bit difficult uh, here but we can uh, do as much as we can um, so as we go down the tendon uh, just that there is Go down, there's the pec major tendon, there's my arrow, there it is going across here. So that's your landmark to come down to, to visualize it. And then and then I'd go back up and go in the long section. Okay, so the long section is here, you can see the tendon fibers nice. Okay, now this is going obviously uh, down and into articulate, which we won't see much of. If you've got, um, if they've got a particularly shallow groove, then you might have a better chance of seeing the articulation inside of the other bit. But if they've got a deep groove, you certainly won't because it tends to attach a bit more posteriorly. Um, so then, what you need to do here is you probe. This is the normal position here when the probe's on the on the patient. You see how dark the tendon is, and that looks that looks tendinopathic now. But it's not it's just because I haven't optimised my image. So what I need to do is, um, well, first of all, I can bring the focus down a little bit, and then I can feel toe the probe. So I'm, 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 I'm doing this movement to make the, the, the um, tendon, and you see how much brighter that is now? And that's, that's, that's optimized now. So I can see the tendon fiber is nicely going down, there's no fluid, no synovial thickenings, no bits of calcification. All this looks good. You can see the underlying muscle um, architecture here nicely as well. Always keep an eye on it. Always keep an eye um, on things exterior to what you're looking at because you will pick up the odd uh, lymphoma or ganglion or cysts or whatever. Um, so just keep your eyes open at exterior to what you're looking at. So let's have a look go down a bit more. So you follow this down. To the muscular tendon junction here. So if you've got a rupture, I mean all this will be full of fluid, but still you would see a tendon, there might be a hematoma down here where it's where it's torn off. But this this looks this looks all good. And you can bump that down. There. And then back up. And there we go, back up into the groove. And you can see that nicely. Okay, um, split tears, you split tears, you can probably see, you tend, they tend to get those in the, in the, in the biceps and they're best viewed in the long section. So if I just, the long section is out here. So what you'll get is a, like a black line that goes through the center of this tendon here. And that can be like a, a different split tear. And then all you need to do then is confirm it in the transverse view. And, what, and, and that will look like a, just like a little black hole um, in the middle of the tendon. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see if I can go across onto the PowerPoint images now to show you a few of those while we're here. Right, so um, you can look at A. A there is showing you an, an empty bicycle groove, and you can see the blackness and the fluid. So that that's that's a, a ruptured tendon, um, and that's you can't see that in the groove. And um, uh, obviously, what I do is obviously look merely just to make sure it's not merely some looks, uh, but in this case, it wasn't. Now, B, you can see that's um, immediately immediately subluxed biceps tendon. 
Um, I haven't got an hour on here, so you just, um, if you can just see where the bicep tendon is and it's just slipping outside of that groove. And the next one, C, is even further. So it's just slipping outside the groove. There's a little bit of cortical irregularity you can see there as well on the, on the bony surface of image C. Um, image D, you can see there's fluid around that, ten, that tendon. The tendon being the, the white band between the, the, the blackness. And there's a little, and, and those little uh, bright areas within the black fluid are little synovial deposits. Okay. And then if you go on to E, uh, you can see the bicep tendon in the middle, that white blob. And then you've got an also a, a, a fusion. And then an, an obviously the Doppler around that, giving it the uh, tina synovitis of that, uh, of, that, um, of that biceps tendon. Okay. Right, so we'll go back, um, go back to the other one now. So that, that pretty much covers the, um, the, the, uh, the, the biceps, the lung head of the biceps tendon. So we're going to have a look at the, the distal biceps tendon now. Um, so what I'm going to do is start off with the muscle belly, okay? Um, and if I get my, uh, so you can see, and what you're looking for is this. So this this muscular uh, intramuscular septum here. Because as I go down, you'll see this. My grapes, my grapes keeps migrating, and then this becomes the tendon. Okay, so you've got the tendon, and I'm just gonna. Defrost my glasses again. Um, and you can see that coming down here. And the, the trick is, if it gets quite difficult because it will dive, is to follow it down. Here it is, drive it up, follow it down. So this, so this is still this is still the bicep tendon coming down. And then it starts to dive very, very sharply. It's quite difficult to follow. So what, I'm like, so what I tend to do is, is come down immediately and place my probe, the, the top of the probe on the medial condyle and then come, come in until, until I see the bone here. Uh, let's just get this one. There's the arrow there. And it is, it is very fizzly. A great image though. Yeah, so this, here you go, so it's attaching here. I'm just going to get this himself now. There you go guys, it's always a learning experience every time you scan. That's it. There. So it's just it, it is just um, lateral um, to the, the vessel here. So I'll just angle that down and then I'll freeze this in a second and you can hopefully see it again. You, this is the uh, radial tuberosity here and then this is the bicep, this bicep tendon that's, that's coming down here. It's, it's actually a, a bit of uh, sh short head and the long head. So the short head um, comes down and attaches a bit more distantly and this will be the long head that attaches here. But you, it's quite difficult to make them out. Um, the best way to make them out is actually not in the normal section, but in the, um, in the transverse section. So, here. Yeah. So, what I've got here is probably one optimised and one isn't. Is, so, this, this one is optimised, where this one looks dark. 
So that's that's basically where the, the, the bicep tendon inserts. It's the bicep tendon inserts. Is it always a, a fiddly tendon to follow? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Just because it dips down quite quite deep. In the... Yeah, and everyone's everyone's anatomy is. Is, is different and, you, and when you come across and you're sliding across to find it, it sometimes it will just jump out at you. Um, and sometimes it's so always scan from medial to lateral and to, to try. Yeah, to I mean you can you can follow it down. This is not right now. Um, follow it down. Uh, let me get the arrow. So this this is the tendon. I've got my focus. Let me just. Uh, well, this is it. So there's the there's the biceps tendon here. Okay, and I'm going to follow it down, and then it it dives. So you've got to keep adjusting your so move your focus down. And I'll move my depth up so I need a bit more real estate. And then you you can turn on it long section. Can you just show the controls again? I, I, I didn't quite have the camera on it. Which uh, controls were you manipulating to optimize your image? So um, you've got the depth here. Yeah, the depth button. That will alter the depth. And then the focus is actually on here. And that alters the little red marker at the side of the image. And you, you want that pointing to where, you, where you're looking at. Every machine is, of course, different, but they all do have these same, um, same buttons and features. Yeah. So come down and so there, and, there, and that's it there. I just read there. So this is the biceps tendon that's inserted here. And it goes up, and it's quite difficult to distinguish the the, the two of them here. And I'll show you an image as well, um, which which shows you why. So there, there he's going up there, these are the tendon fibers, my biceps tendon. And that's going up. And then what I did is a turn transverse again, and then it goes into the muscle belly of biceps. So it's a very it's a very tricky tendon to, to get right. Um, um, but you, you know, you practice it, you, you, you know it's you can get it even though I will struggle tonight. Um, okay. Is there one more common pathology with biceps tendons that you see more frequently than others? Well, if, if you're looking at the distal biceps tendons, usually you're looking for is it ruptured? That's what it usually comes into. Um, it usually comes in elbow pain. Um, and actually, so the top image on the on the left, you can see um, where those arrows are pointing. That's a little tear in the distal biceps tendon. There's probably a little bit of fluid there around there, just just inferiorly. Uh, around that as well. And then the one below that you can see, obviously you can see the, the vessel running along the top, that, uh, the black tube, and then just below that is the, is the distal biceps tendon insertion with a bit of um, uh, maybe a small tear and a bit of tendinopathy there. Um, so you, you, you'll tend to get more of a, um, uh, a a bicipital radial bursa more than a tenosynovitis, so that's just especially around the insertion there. So just, just be aware that if you see fluid, um, oops, if you see fluid around that distal area, that's probably a, a bicipital radial bursa. And the, and, the, and the image on the right just shows you how the attachment is. So you can see the short head attaches more distally than the long head. And then it's sort of, as you go up, they merge into one another as it, as it meets the, the muscle belly there. Um, so it's quite it's quite difficult to distinguish the two when you're tracing it back up, but um, uh, you know you you just have to describe describe what you see. Um, the other thing to look at is um, obviously the, the muscle. Trace it back into the muscle belly, um, and you can look for any tears at the muscle belly, any hemat any hematomas or anything like that. Um, oh yes, the, 
now there's a there's another bit of anatomy that come, comes off the biceps uh, tendon, um, and that's the lassitus uh, lassitus fibrosis. Um, and you can you can pick that up. Oh, I'll have a look, see if I can find it. But let me just switch to the switch back to the screen. So it shoots off. It shoots off medially. Uh, so this is this may be it coming up here. Uh, now, if that's if that's torn, you'll probably get more, and, and, the, and the biceps, distal biceps ruptures, you'll probably get more of a retraction. But if but if you're if you're down at the distal biceps down here, and there's not much retraction from from a rupture, then it's a good chance that that that's, that that's it, just fibrosis is still intact. Um, now there are other ways you can look at this, um, and the other way is called the Cobra view. So what we do is, I don't know if you got that on there. So he's basically bit out of his hand into like the Cobra position like that, and then you one transducer length up and across. This this is actually the distal biceps tendon insertion here. Sorry, I just trying to get a little shot of the pro position for it. So if I if I rotate that in and out, you can see that you can see the distal biceps still attached there. And that's a good that's a good way of looking at it as well. You can't get it either way. Yeah, you can see that moving. Yeah, got a good movement there. Good good image. Okay, so it's using one transducer length up and then one transducer length across and that should get you right in that, that spot. Okay, and that pretty much is the distal biceps tendon and the uh, longular biceps tendon. Um, is there any questions, Steve, coming through at all? No questions coming through. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go through um, what I normally do for like a full shoulder exam and then um, if any questions come up we can, we can get them. So as, as I said, I usually stand behind the patients and scan them that way, um, especially if you're doing them all day. Do you think you might want to actually try that? Because I might be able to get a better image. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Perhaps okay. Yeah, that's really good. Can you let's just then um, swap um, our positions? So what you can do. Absolutely. I have had one one request just come in. Uh, yeah. if you may. Um, can we scan the distal biceps laterally? Distal biceps, what? Say again, we just lost the last bit there. Can we get a scan the distal biceps from laterally? Oh, from laterally. From laterally. Distal biceps from laterally. So scanning from lateral to medial. Oh, from this way. Um, no, well, no, I, I don't know a way that you can do that. Um, okay. Because it, the, 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 the tibial tuberosity is here. Um, so I, I don't know how you're going to get to it. You need to, you need to come medially to see its attachment. Um, here, you, you won't see it from this side. The cobra view, you can come and, and see it from the way I showed you, just that distal bit. Um, but the best way to see it is either tracing it down and then angling in or angling from the medial side across because the tubular tuberosity is around here somewhere in the, in the middle. So, so no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you can scan it actually. Just had a, I think a, a suggestion coming lateral to medial. Um, well, it's not, it's not one that I've done. Um, you'll end up in the same place probably, whether you come laterally or medially. Um, but I, I just find it easier to scan medial to come because you're facing the right way. Whereas if you come laterally, you're going to have to come across and then angle back because it's um, because of the way it's positioned. So it's probably just easier to just come medial and angle it straight across. You're facing the, facing the right way from across. Okay, um, I had another question come in actually while I've got you. Uh, in your experience, Adrian, uh, do you see a in the co Cobra view? 
Um, I, I'm not, to be honest, but you can you can certainly get it. Um, I don't I don't tend to use the COVID review myself because I, t I tend to prefer I tend to see more of the insertion going from medium, um, and then you can pick up avulsions that way quite easily. Um, it's just another confirmatory view to see the. Um, if, it, if the distal bicep is intact, the COVID view, but I, I don't tend to use it all that often, to be, to be perfectly honest. I tend to use it from how I showed you from the medial aspect. But it's probably easier to find. <laughs> it's quite easy, it's quite difficult to find it from the medial side. But they don't, they don't, you don't get many requests for distal biceps, but obviously it's, a, it's usually a traumatic, traumatic thing, so they don't come in that often. But yeah. Okay, we have had a challenge come in as far as I can see. We've got a yes, you can. I think that's the response. Ooh. Well, there you go, you can show me. I did say <laughs> I would ask all questions or make, uh, you know. Um, so, um, there you go. You can, you, can, you can show me then. Yeah. Um, right, so shall I go through the, um, uh, the shoulder as I would do it? So, I'm going to start with the ACJ. Um, and then optimize the image. So you've got you've got the uh, the chromium end here, the chromium clavicular joint, the uh, um, chromium clavicular ligament going across the top and the capsule here. That's me shrugging my shoulder just to show some movement. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, and then once I've once I've looked at that, I then go down onto the biceps tendon, which is what we started with today. Okay. But are you showing uh, how you do a, a full general shoulder exam? Yeah. So you start AC first, and then I start AC and... first. Um, you don't have to. There's no, there's no rule about that. You just start where you want, but it just once you once you get into a routine, you just tend to tend to tend to stick with it. So you've got um, the biceps tendon here, but nice and bright biceps tendon, holding it down. So you can look at the depth of it a bit. Oops, wrong way. Down to the pec major tendon, going across here. Back up, and there's the uh, biceps tendon in the long section. Turn it down, we can put any fluid in the biceps sheath. Down to the muscular tendinous junction. There we go, and then you can take it up into I get great great views of the of the interval but the rotating interval is up here. So we've got subscrap biceps and then probably with a bit of soup around here. Okay, and then I'd look at the subscapularis and then which have to dynamically take that out to the side. So you've got a bit of biceps, Oops. a bit of biceps there, subscapularis here, nice smooth contour. Okay, just remember to scan all the way through the all the way through the tendon. As I said before, this the beam coming out of this um, probe is one millimeter thick, so you're getting a one millimeter snapshot here, um, and that's all you see. So you need to scan all the way through, make sure you're covering it all. Also, in transverse, you can look at it. Just remember that you do do get a bit of interdigitation with the with the, the loss of the tendon there, so it will look a bit strange. But if you do see any, see any pathology, you always check it in two planes. Okay, and then uh, 
then if you pop your hand behind your back from where it is, uh, and actually we'll go for the modified press, so just just there. And that allow me to get down to the bicep tendon here. Supraspinatus, so, as I say, find the anterior facet, middle facet, so this, this is steeper just to here. And then that goes onto in front. And then scan. Obviously, that also in long section. This is quite a common place to, to mistake tears, which just makes sure you fill them in, get them nice and bright, get rid of that anisotropy to make sure that any, any tears there. There you go. And then the other thing uh, check for the overlying bursa, see if there's any sort of bursa thickening. Maybe a little bit here, David. Calcification, local areas of hyper-echogenicity. Hyper, hyper uh, some of it may have a shadow behind it, but some of it may not. Um, okay, then what's in the audience? Hyper-echogenicity, hyper-echogenicity, <laughs> is... So, yeah, so hyper is bright, so this, this bone is hyperechoic here, this is hyperechoic, this would be hyperechoic, um, and this, this, this would be anechoic down here, so no echoes. Okay. So once I've done that, that's super it there, then I go into interest notice, and you pop your arm across onto your shoulder. And then what I tend to do is, is go back, pick up this, this is the arrow gone, there it is. Pick up this bright band here, that's your, that's your central tendon. And now I just follow that round onto the insertion here. Okay. Come back and back. And then I just take my probe down. Inferiorly, and I come on to the middle LA heel joint. So we've got the labrum, the labrum, the glenoid. Yeah. And then if you wanted to look for impingement, I'd come back to this, uh, this area, try and pick up the chromium, and then that, that view. Here, yeah. and then uh, Abbott abducts his arm. Whoops, which is uh, abductor. Yeah. So you can just see as it, as it disappears underneath the acromion, that's a, it's a common site for impingement and fluid to pop up and bunch there. And it just, so here, underneath the acromion here. You can see that coming out there and going back under. Nice. And that's, and that's really my shoulder exam. I mean, I've, I've been looking for, you know, sometimes you can pick, pick up lipomas and uh, cysts, ganglion cysts and things that come out um, from the joints and uh, lipomas in the, in the fat layer and stuff like that. I've got one just there, Do you want to show them that? Sure, that Where, where is it? It's just uh, the same. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, let me get the arrow. So, this, so this here, all this, you should like over. You can see this is the fat layer, so it's contained within the fat layer. So it's, one thing you don't want it to do is reach into the muscle layer. You can see it's nice and smooth. Okay, and then there's that's probably the end of it there, and then it goes back into normal fat appearance. So all, all this is that lipoma 
And how do you differentiate, um, again, for the audience, lipoma from something more sinister? Yeah, okay, well, it's, it's difficult because there's, there's a lot of crossovers and you have to be very careful. Um, but I, I've got a list of characteristics. So, uh, one, is it, is it, is it oval shaped? Is it irregular shaped? Um, you know, what's the shape of it? If it's irregular, then obviously that's not, not a good sign that it's more oval, that's, that's a better sign. Um, you know, in its contents, is it all uh, cystic? Is it solid? Is it mixed epigenicity? Just look at the contents and you can see that you look at the contents here. It's very sort of similar striations to the subcutaneous fat here. It's not a lot different. You can sort of um, make out maybe slightly hypericoic to it. To it, so you mentioned that slightly high, hyperechoic to, to the subcutaneous fat. Um, and then the other thing is Doppler. Put the Doppler on if there's any flow. Obviously, uh, optimize your Doppler settings to, to low flow. Um, and just check if there's any Doppler signal in that. And if there's any breaching cross layers, cross fascial planes like this. And then as long as you're not ticking any of those boxes, then you could probably say that you know it's probably a lipoma. But the other thing is, is just to say that if you get any rapid growth with it, um, then you should have another scan. It becomes tender, painful, get another scan. Um, and if it's quite large as well, I'd probably I'd probably get another another scan um, or even um, refer it if it's sort of six centimeters and six seven centimeters, you know. I think they, they're quite prone to wanting to take those out when they get to that sort of size. Uh, yeah, so I think that pretty much covers. Brilliant, thank you. I'm getting quite busy this at this end. So a couple of direct questions, if I may, please. Um, would you do, or do you do a dynamic test for the biceps and long head, or do you just observe? Um, the, 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 the dynamic test for the medial subluxation, is that what they, is that what they mean? Yes, yeah, long head subluxation. Yeah. yeah, so I do that just to make sure that there's no um, subluxation medially. Um, and the die that is just, it's just an external rotation. So you see that and when you'll see the, you see the subscapularis come in. And you'll see that the, the, the um, you'll see biceps tendon <coughs> sublux over. That way. So, yeah, great. Sorry. Yeah, go on, Stephen. No, say the, uh, the 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 conversation that came up earlier. Laterally, you can scan with velvet. Oh, yeah. and super oh yes, I'm intrigued. Uh, well, there's a uh, the great advice coming from Adnan, so we're really grateful. There's a technique shown by I'm going to get the the pronunciation wrong, but Nick Nick Vank. Uh, and it's available oh, yes. on YouTube. Name your familiar. Yes. yes, I know. Oh no, I, I think I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the cotton reel. Um, just ask him if he's talking about the cotton reel um, view. Okay. Um, I imagine that's what he's talking about. I'm sure, he's still Adnan is still listening. Feel free to uh, come back to us on that, Adnan. It's great to have some interaction from the crowd. So thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I know what he's talking about. It's I, I don't use it myself, but it's it's basically a, you have you have the uh, the radial as, a, as like a, a cotton reel, and then as they as the pronating and supinating, you can see the um, the biceps tendon underneath. Uh, it's I find it a bit fiddly, and I'm I, I'm not very good at it to be honest, so I don't tend to use it. But it's I think he's talking about this this cotton reel view. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so you, you can see how we're just twisting there. And what's happening is, um, you get the array, is the biceps tendons under here somewhere, if you just keep twisting that way. The debate's going to go on because Adnan's come and said that is different. Uh -huh. oh, okay, okay, well then that's... Uh I'm, I don't know how you feel, Adnan. More than happy to uh, unmute you and we'd, we'd love to hear your thoughts, but I don't want to put anyone on the spot, of course. It's obviously a difficult situation in the situation we're in. We don't, we can't have a free for all of you know thirty people talking and uh, into a screen to a camera at the same time. But more than happy for you to to share that with the group if you'd like, Adnan. But no, yeah, absolutely. Nope. Nope. No pressure, but you <laughs> join the group. 
but thank you. I mean, you know, we, obviously we're, we're, we're picking up what you're saying, so that's great. It's yeah, Nick, Nick, um, the, the guy, fact. Nick, Nick Fink, I think his name's Nick Fink, he's, he's, um, he's from the Netherlands, I think, he's, 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 he's very good, uh, physiotherapist, I think he is. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, I've, I've seen him a lot of Amsterdam courses um, uh, over there. And he's quite, he's quite, he's quite good on the uh, on social media as well with, with uh, ultrasound. So it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, consult. Good, suggest good suggestion out to everybody out there then to maybe have a look at that, yeah. um, uh, that chap on YouTube. So thank you, Adnan. Any other questions? Um, I think I've got to go back now. The 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 questions come into a box. Said this before. It's like the old Vidi Vidi computers we used to have on a Saturday afternoon, where they if you don't you don't pay attention, the, the questions disappear. Or disappear. Um, so I'm just going to backtrack and see if I've missed any. Um, No, I think it's mainly suggestions coming in. Oh, sorry, here we have got, uh, oh, got one. Hi, Corn, And they've got one uh, question from Corn. Good to see you, Corn. Or get a question from you. Could you demonstrate the superglenoid notch and contents? Oh, okay. So, uh, let's have a look. So come back to the this from behind here. So, so there is the notch here. Um, and there'll be a there'll be a nerve and a vessel in here. You don't get to see it that well, but you can pick up fluid that tracks back from the glenoid out into, into this area. Um, and if you put the doctor on. Down a bit. Might be able to pick up a vessel there. Just a little. No. Like not picking it up, but there's a, there's a vessel uh, here and, and obviously a, a nerve which you can uh, which you can pick up. Um, but uh, you know it's, it depends how well you well you see it. I mean you can swap um, I mean, if you get quite big big patients, you can swap to the abdominal probe and just stick the abdominal probe on and have a look. Uh, sometimes that can that can give you like a better better visualization at the back here because we're quite we're quite deep now. Look at the, or five centimeters deep, so your quality goes down a bit. Um, but it's essentially, you'd see um, uh, when, I, when I look look for this, I just look for any sort of fluid or thing just tracking back into the back into the notch there. And, and really, from us, it's just um, to reinforce the the take home message from from these sessions that you know ultrasound is a very very practical skill. Sure, there's um some academic stuff there too, but it, it really just is a case of getting hands on and practicing and practicing and looking again and again and again at images, you know, even if you just have a machine at home and you're looking at yourself or your family members, it, it really does um, matter how much uh, man hours you put into actually using the probe and getting your eye used to the scanning uh, screen. So uh, just wanted to reinforce that little message. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you all. It's great to see so many people um, joining us and hopefully you picked up uh, at least one or two nuggets from this session. Uh, Adrian and I look forward to uh, coming back again next week uh, with Ankle as uh, Steve mentioned.